today on the grid we've got Christina in the house Scott and Eric are out and today with me I've got someone very special he came here from Texas to enjoy the Florida Sun and film a class with us here at Kelby one these past few days we've had a lot of fun he shoots weddings beauty shots portraits a ton the one and only Lenworth Johnson bam Hello. The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to platypod.com. Hey, everyone. Welcome to The Grid. It's a nice warm day here in Florida in November. Waiting for the weather to get cooler, but it still feels like summer, kind of. What do you think, Lenworth? Kind of warm here because it's a little chilly in Houston. Yeah. Yeah. So Lenworth has been our um, guest here at Kelby One for the past few days. We were, he was here filming a class with us. We've had yep. a ton of fun. And um, we're going to be, do you want to tell them what the class was about? Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, the class is going to be about um, learning how to, you know, recreate your inspirational images with Lighten. Yep. And, you know, to get those awesome shots. I hope you go check it out. Make a lot of money while doing it. Yeah, so make sure you guys be on the lookout for that. Yeah. Coming um, soon. Yes. And then a big shout out to Kathy and Dobson for helping us with our yes. shoot yesterday. Dobson, and the five-star general. Five-star general. <laughs> and we have also, of course, have uh, Juan and Eric and Jason, um, our video team. Um, give them shout outs for all their help too. Absolutely. So today's topic is going to be about how to get your photos published. And it came to us um, yesterday, we were talking and um, Len Len Lenworth had mentioned to me that this is the most common question he gets from people is how do you publish your work? So I thought that would make a great grid topic. And I'm so excited to hear everyone's viewpoints from today. Later, we'll bring um, Eric Kuna on, and then again, Dave Williams, um, and kind of get a whole bunch of different perspectives and different ways to get your work published. So yes. I hope you guys really enjoy this yes, show There's today. a bunch of ways to do it, so we'll run through that all yep. today. But first, we have to talk about what prizes we're giving away. If you do want to win a prize, make sure you drop a comment in the chat. Tell us what you want to win and where you're from and um and then we'll be sure to try and pick a, one lucky winner for the following prizes do you want to um read some of the prizes can you see them um yeah we have plot of pod elbow support which is right here so you can see that attach a phone to that has several use we or have a light too because this is, a, light. This is yes. the first time we're giving one of these away okay. um i think i don't remember giving one of these away yet but we have a few to give away and i'm so excited when they came in i was just like oh my gosh look at all the different ways you can use it is it just so we have arm? it screwed on right now to the platypod ultra yeah um but when it comes to you it's like it's the, just the, arm? the arm and a little clamp too and so you know you could put a little bounce card on it you could put uh a phone the phone on it light those little um loom cube lights the loom yeah, yeah. cube yeah so, so. and so um i'm just so excited about these i'm like i just want one can i pick myself okay we'll see about what that. else <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh travel book and i, I think this the book is written book. by a great guy um i think his name is scott kelby writes the best book on the planet <laughs> world's yes. bestseller <laughs> yeah yep. and, and then also another book from scott how do i do that in lightroom yep yeah so these are his top selling books right now we're gonna give and those are on the zon the amazon they're on the amazon <laughs> there you go all right on one effects 22 actually it's 2023 um i heard they updated so i did verify last okay. week that we're actually starting to give away the on one effects 2023 okay and one year oh no one v flat u.s shipping only so listen now if you're in europe i'm sorry got to be in the u.s <laughs> one dual board xl u.s shipping only which is also a v flat product yes. right and it comes with 
double sides. So, um, you know, once you get them, you get two, and each one is double sided. So you can get up to four looks with just the one duo board. Yes. So, and you can email gridprize at kelbywan.com with your information once you get selected. Yep. And also, there's, um, I think they give 10% away from. Uh, to anyone watching, if you do want to order some V-flats, you can use the discount code KELBY10 at checkout and get 10% off at vflatworld.com. And then we also have one more sponsor that's relatively new. It's um, Imogen, and they're get any new customers will get 1,000 AI edits, um, digital edits for free. So those are all of our giveaways for the day. And um, I see people are already... Um, checking in from all around. Do you want to give some shout outs, Lenworth? Hey, uh, James Garden in Phoenix. Yep. Hey, James. Uh, Hi, James. Rick Tucker. Uh, Sherry. Can you see that? Cottrell. Cottrell. Dan C Gallander. Gallander. From San Francisco. San Fran. Peter. Hey, Peter, how are you? <laughs> Dave Young. Lawrence. Lurie, is that correct? Lenny, yeah. Okay, Bonjour great. from Arizona. Arizona. Says. Thank you for nice. joining everyone. Good to see you guys. Um, and then I just, before we get started, I just do want to give one announcement, and that is our Cyber Monday deals are coming soon. So obviously next week is Thanksgiving week, kind of, you know, and then the day after that first Monday is going to be Cyber Monday. Mm -hmm. And I have a sneak peek of all the different deals that are coming through with our sponsors. Sneak peek. And um, so basically what we do is we go live every hour on the hour. Mm -hmm. So starting at 10, we go live and we do a um, special deal. A lot of times they last for about 24 hours. Mm -hmm. uh, most of those do. Okay. And uh, there's a ton of really good deals that I've seen come through. Okay. And so make sure um, you guys mark the date to check in. We'll be on Scott's Facebook page every hour on the hour, giving special deals away. Um, and so I just want to make sure I tell people so that they know. Don't forget, to do it. Cyber Monday, special Cyber deals. Monday. Um, okay, so like I had mentioned, when we were talking yesterday, you told me that the most common thing that people have asked you is how do you get published? Yes. And Folks so want to know how to get, you know, their image published in magazines, how to get their names out there. Right. And so yeah. I, I think one of the first questions I asked you was, well, you know, how do you find out who to go to? Yeah. Well, it depends on what you want to do. There are different magazine, um, Caviar, Caviar, K A V Y A R. Um, typically, I'll, I'll go there yeah. and um, go through the magazines and see what they're looking for. Uh -huh. And then I'll submit images based on what they want and take it from there. So they'll tell you if they accept it or not. And based on that, you can get other work. So basically, it's like there's a site you can use, and then they you can submit your photos to them, and they'll kind of also give you an indication of the type of photos that they're looking for. Yes. So can you get to my screen? Yeah, so if you go here, you, you can uh, select a magazine. You can see they're looking for fashion work for November. So, you know, you, you set up a submission, and you can do the free version. And you select it, have your images ready. So they're looking for four to 12 images. And you fill out the information, attach those images, and follow the specifications. If you don't do that, you will be rejected. So make sure you have your copyright info, all that stuff, your model's information, if you use makeup artists, all that stuff. You know, whatever title you want to use. So you have all that stuff ready. You drop it in and go ahead and hit submit and they'll send you an email and they'll tell you whether you're accepted or not. And so I know you typically do a lot of beauty and fashion, right? Yes. And so um, when you first got started, did you just submit pictures that you already had or did you have to like go shoot that stuff? I had to shoot stuff to, to submit. 
because some of the stuff I had would, was out of specs. So I was like, oh, I can submit that. Mm. Yeah. So because, you know, when I just started, I was like shooting everything tight, you know, crop everything tight. And then you realize once you started shooting for magazine, you have to have variations. So because they want to add text to it. They want to add editor if it's going on a cover, depending on what they want it for. So you have to be able to have variations in your shot. Yeah, I remember you talking about that a lot yesterday, yeah, too. Yeah. It was just like, as he was shooting, just naturally, you know, he'd be like getting close, getting wide, yes. just getting the variety of shots so that way it wasn't just one look. Yeah, and so it, it's telling a story. It's, it's one set of co uh, cohesive images that's telling a story. So they, they want to see that. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're doing it and you're only sending in all tight images, chances are they're not going to choose it. Because they, they want variety so so they can see what you have. So what do you charge for this type of stuff? Or do they set the prices and tell you? Well, when you're starting out, sometimes you don't get paid for it. But once you have a name, <laughs> then you start getting a little change. And, you know, some of the times what will happen is they give you a budget and they'll say, okay, we're giving you $1,000 to do the shoot. So once you get established and then they start to trust your work, yeah, then once they, they actually you. seek you out. Yeah, they'll seek you out. You will get emails and you're like, okay, that was nice. And, you know, so you have, they'll send you something and say, okay, produce this shoot. And, you know, you get compensated for it. You know, and a lot of times you'll get on the back end of that, somebody might see your work and they're like, we like what he did. So let's contact him and have him do something else. Wow, that is so fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm sure a lot of viewers out there might be thinking too, like, well, I don't wanna have to like produce a shoot, mm -hmm. you know? So what does that kind of stuff entail? Um, so is it intimidating? And no, it's, it's not. You just gotta have um, a good team to work with you. See, like you have a team here. Yep. It, it's kind of the same process. So. You know, I have a makeup artist. I might get a hairstylist. You know, I'm, I'm doing lighting and all that stuff. So I have a team and we worked around, okay, it's, it's a fashion image they're looking for. So we might call a, you know, store, fashion store and try to get outfits on loaner, you know, and then we send them back after we shoot. So we find ways of doing it. And maybe exchange the photos yeah. for the- Give them promotion as well, sense. yeah, so. I know um, one of our tricks too, sometimes depending on how heavy the hair and makeup might be, mm -hmm. you can find someone that does both hair and makeup. Hair so and you makeup, can find yes. one person that can do both. Um, sometimes it is beneficial to have a stylist on set, especially if you to, have to, a certain type of, of look that you're going look for. Look yeah. or, yeah. yeah. Um, but if not, you know, a lot of times we'll be able to skip that extra person by. Um, you know, letting the model know what they need what they or need. ordering their whatever they need yeah. um, in their size. And so then that way, um, and it depends on the type of shot you want too. like if it's a headshot, headshot versus a full, body, a full body, you know, you want to have it styled correctly. You don't want yes. to have it wrong because then you'll get rejection and then they won't want to work with you, yeah, it won't you know, so. So can you still end up making money? Like, this, so you're talking about the shoots that you get budgeted for. Yeah. That you're able so you to can, them on. you can make money even if they don't pay you to do these shoots because people are seeing it. You're, you're putting yourself out there. It's exposure. So once people see this, you know, they're calling you because it has your information in there. So they're calling you, hey, we would like you to shoot a wedding for us because I've gotten calls like that. So then I shoot the wedding and I make a bunch of money from shooting the wedding. So, you know, it's sometimes you do the free portion, you get paid on the back portion. It's yeah. So it's not all upfront sometimes. Well, I just love this and I can't wait to talk more about it, but we yes. do need to take a break. Coming up next, we're going to have Eric Kuna with us and we're going to ask him how he's been successful in getting work published. Stay with us.
When I come home from a trip or an event, I share the images online, right? I share them in a particular way that every time I do it, I get emails, I get comments, and I get stuff on social media, people saying, what software are you using to share this story? It looks phenomenal. It's the storytelling medium that is so great. It makes your photos look fantastic and lets you wrap your story around it. It's called Adobe Express, and I made a class on it. It's an entire course. It's short because it's so easy. Adobe Express itself is free. If you're gonna sign up for Adobe Express, go ahead and put some images together, come with me and follow along in the class. When the class is over, your Adobe Express page is up and running and you're gonna do it in no time at all and be blowing people away with the presentation. And you know what? It's all about the presentation. So come and check out my brand new course on photo storytelling with Adobe Express. I'm Karen Hutton. Join me as we go chasing fall color in the Eastern Sierra Nevada mountains of California to make amazing images of this incredible time of year. I'm gonna share with you everything I can come up with out of my years of experience photographing this incredibleness in this beautiful part of the world to hopefully save you some time and energy when you wanna shoot the glorious colors of autumn wherever you are in the world. I'll share tricks like understanding how fall color starts at the highest elevation and works its way down and what that timing is all about. We'll talk about planning, we'll talk about preparing, we'll talk about gear, we'll talk about lenses, the, the actual nitty gritty about how to shoot some of it as well as how to tell a story how to walk away with a book of your experiences, how to use color play. We'll talk about the detailed shots, the mid shots, the big epic shots. We're gonna share a lot with you and I'm not holding anything back. So join me for my latest class and best adventure ever at kelbyone.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. And welcome back. Um, on the line, we've got Eric Kuna, and um, we're going to ask him. Hi, Eric. Hey, Christina. How's it going? Good. How are you? Hey, Eric. How are you? Great. Hey, Lenworth. How's it going, too? Good. Good to see you, sir. Awesome. So Great Eric was you. shooting last night at yeah. the wee hours of the night. And, I uh, was. I was. <laughs> I'm surprised you're awake right now, but thank you so much for taking the time to pop on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was fun. Fun night. Um, Artemis launch uh, got uh, I got out of here. It's been uh, a few times of scrubs and, and reschedules, but finally launched last night about two o'clock in the morning. Wow, so. that's nice. exciting, though. Yeah, it was great. Okay, super so... super loud. Yeah, and, but even more uh, bright. Oh, just ridiculously bright. Hmm. Wow. Well, I'm sure um, we'll be seeing some of those images pour out sometime mm -hmm. in the near future. Yeah. So I'll be looking yeah. for those. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay. So I have to ask you this because, you know, as someone who, you know, we started working together several years ago and I've watched you grow into, um, you know, this photographer that is getting published and you know is just getting a lot of different success and um i know it has it must have taken so much hard work and i just want to hear your perspective in terms of what you have done in order to get your work published 
Well, you know, uh, I think you hit on one key thing right there is the hard work. I mean, nothing, nothing in this comes easy. Um, I think a lot of people, you know, this is one of this is not one of these things where you uh, you just buy your way to something that you just uh, buy a ticket or buy a magic pass and it somehow solves the problem. You know, you have to put in the work. Um, I think the other thing is, you know, you've got to be able to in the beginning especially is is really putting yourself out there you know like get, getting good at what you want to be doing but then putting yourself out there in front of other people talking to you know different people uh different magazines different editors uh different agencies um all these different all these different places and you're going to hear no a lot and yeah. that's okay that's it's okay. okay. I mean, All you, you need is to, one yes. <laughs> yeah. You need one yes, and then you need another yes, and you need another yes. yes. And that's what it takes, is it takes that perseverance. I actually think that's probably the key. Um, you know, I talk about that a lot with photography, is perseverance. Uh, but especially in this, when you're talking about getting yourself out there, getting published, um, getting people to pick up what you're doing, you've got to have perseverance. You can't just give up. You know, because you are going to have also moments, too, where you're going to look at other people and go, well, look at my work is better than theirs. So why am I not getting that? And you can't look at it like that. You never want to look at it like that Mm -hmm. because that will just kind of deflate you and kind of bring you back down. You know, it just it just takes that wind out of your sail. You got to be concerned about yourself and your path. And and that's that would be my advice is to really put yourself out there. Um, and then go down your own path and not compare yourself to other people, not be doing a lot of that. And like you, you also want mentors. That's another thing is getting people in your life that can kind of coach you through these things. Um, that's why, you know, I mean, I think what we do, um, that's really the design of it is to help our members, help them with what they're, what they're struggling with and what they're doing, asking questions, leading people along. I've helped a lot of people. Um, down that path just from that but you have to be able to put in the work I think that's what it is so um, I would imagine like some people would feel intimidated you know at first mm-hmm. and so yeah. what does how do you get your foot in the door where do you start well I think it varies right you know I think it's going to vary by what genre what areas that you're going into but um, to get your foot in the door in the beginning, it is you've got to put yourself out there with something that's differentiating. Uh, you have to you have to be able to have something where you are telling a compelling story, where you are um, coming up with different interesting ideas. Not like I am just replicating what other people are doing. I am I am going to tell a story. I'm going to give or. If you're in like product photography or, or portrait photography, I'm doing something that is unique that people are going to want to seek me out for. You know, you have to have that like different um, element to your photography. It can't just be like I, I, I'm just replicating what other people like. Put your own spin on it, mm-hmm. and really kind of like giving yourself your own differentiating factor. Yes, what I'm trying to say. I love yes. that. And I think yes. you're so right because I think the images that you've been able to put out there have pretty much been nothing like I've ever seen before. And now, would I be correct in saying that people now sometimes try to replicate you? Yeah, but what it's interesting is then it, this flips, right? So I talked about in the beginning, like at first you got to seek it out. But as you start doing this stuff, and like what Lenworth is talking to, if you start doing these things that we're talking about, then it'll flip and then yeah. people will seek you out yes and it kind of flips and yeah. then it's just a different thing and then you just have to keep up with it and you have to keep on pushing it doing new things yeah. and, and giving them new ways to keep on coming yes. back to you you, you so, don't want to get comfortable you yeah. know you mm-hmm. don't want to get comfortable because you get a call or two you want to keep pushing yourself to the next level and keep going Right. And so then how do you keep coming up with these new ideas? Like I remember different shots on the beach from afar that have the street shot going through it. And it's like, how do you keep reinventing yourself? Well, I mean, a couple things. One is, you know, um, I do I do tend to have a group of people 
um, group of friends that uh, you colleagues, I guess you'd call them, that you can help help you through that process of just brainstorming. Um, a lot of that is then planning. I, I know a lot of people in photography, they just want to go out and they just want to shoot point. and they don't want to do it. But if you start planning, you start looking for different those different things, you'll come up with new ideas. Like um, just a little while ago, you know, we got this Artemis launch and it's going to be sitting on the pad. And uh, a couple weeks ago, we had a, a like a full moon rising. And we've been trying to, you know, trying to go after like, hey, that'd be cool having a moon, the Artemis rocket on the pad. But weather was very dependent. So what I did is I just kind of monitored the weather. And then it happened to be on that week that we were going to have semi, this was actually not a full full moon, but 99% full moon. So it looks full. But I knew on that week I was just going to monitor the weather. Well, that image then, well, that, that image was great because you had the Artemis rocket on the pad. It's pointing straight up to the moon. I had photo pills, you know, designed with that. And because I was studying that stuff, I got a shot that every, you know, that people then contact and say, hey, can we use this? Hey, can we you know, use this? Hey, can we use this? Because they're like, wow, that tells the story. There's a rocket going to the moon. It's lined up with the moon. You know, it's just Love all it. there. Love that. So. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. So when did you ever imagine that this was going to happen? Like when you first got started, I think you might have been just doing it for fun and then turned into. Did you imagine this kind of situation? Uh, well, a little bit, a little bit, I guess, maybe I, I always have I always have paths that I like to go down. I'm that type of person where I kind of give myself plans and goals and, and you might not get there on your timeline. But I kind of like, you know, like and when I say your timeline, I might not get there on my timeline, but I kind of give myself a path to go down. And I think with this, what it was is I really said, look at what we're doing here is really cool. And really when it started for me was I saw SpaceX land a booster and it was in 2015. And when I, in 2015 I saw that, I went... I want to invest myself into this, into communicating this, into telling people, and, and the way I communicate is visually. That's what I do. You know, video, photography, that's just what I've always been. Mm -hmm. So I use that voice or that medium that I have to communicate that. And then I just went down that path, and that's how it happened. Well, and it's like a passion of yours, too, and I think that's also so important as well as, like, if it's something that you really enjoy and love to do and then that way like you said you were trying to tell the story of something that you were super passionate about right and then maybe that's oh, what yeah. makes it so special and unique is because you've got that inside yeah. of you yeah yeah definitely um well the thing to touch on there is uh, knowing your subject. Um, if you're going to get into a style of photography or you're going to get into something where you're going to be in photojournalism, you really don't want to do something that you you wouldn't want to know the subject, that you wouldn't want to master that subject outside of photography. You know, that you really need to know what's going to happen. Like, I need to mm -hmm. know, like, like last night, like, how soon are the engines going to fire and then get the sound to my camera? Like I know the milliseconds and seconds and have distances and how sound travels. And, but that's, that's interesting to me. Yeah. Like I love that stuff. If you didn't love that stuff and we're doing this, you would, you wouldn't put yourself into that. You yeah, know what I'm saying? It would be yeah. so frustrating to go through all that, you know, yeah. set up all that equipment and trying to figure out mm -hmm. sound yeah, and, exactly. you know, placement to camera and, and all that stuff. Yeah. And it's the, it's the same with like what Len was doing, you know, I mean, if you didn't enjoy creating these intricate, beautiful scenes with uh, the models mm -hmm. of like the makeup and the, the outfits, if, if you didn't enjoy that, it would be a chore to you and, and didn't enjoy the process of it. Yeah. You have to enjoy the process of it. And that's why I say you really have to know that subject. Yeah, it reminds me of, um, I remember working with Dave Black and he was talking about how, you know, he, he shoots a lot of Olympians and different sports and things like that. And it was like, in order to capture certain shots, he really had to study the sport to know where to be when that shot was going to happen. And sometimes happen. I remember him telling me he was like, way far on the other side where all the photographers were on a different area and he went somewhere 
completely different because he knew that's where you get that shot from. So I think that's an important thing to and note. That, and that separated him because he got something different True. from all the other photographers who were on the other side. Yeah, right. Oh, absolutely. This happens in my own life. Of I, I, I was, you know, I did a lot of sports photography, but you know what kind of sports photography I did was the kind of sports photography that I know. I know football. I know baseball. I know basketball. But my daughter has taken up volleyball. I didn't play volleyball. I didn't know volleyball. I've had to learn, and now I'm interested in it because she's interested in it, but I've had to learn that there's stuff that I can't anticipate and know where with, with football, I know where the play is going to go because I've just studied it my whole life. I just know it. And that's where, you know, when you get into photography, like, you not only have to get into knowing your camera, and that's where so everybody gets obsessed with knowing their camera and their buttons and their dials. It's like, don't get obsessed with that. You know, the cameras are so good nowadays, you don't need to get obsessed with that. You need to get obsessed with what's going to make my image different, and then how can I anticipate, and especially in, in stuff where you're capturing action, how do yeah. I anticipate what's going to happen? A wildlife photography is a great example of this. Moose Peterson is genius. I'll be with him. He just knows what animals are going to do. Mm -hmm. It's like a sixth sense. But what is that sixth sense? It's because he studied them his whole life. Yeah. So he just knows. Yes. And that's that's the advantage. Not what camera he's using. Not what lens he's using. Love that's it. his advantage. Yes. I'm like mm -hmm. so excited. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Eric. I know um, you're going to have to not just he we were talking about setting up his cameras but now he's gonna have to go pick them all up yeah soon. i have to go pick them up right now <laughs> I still have to leave here right now and go pick them up so well i hope you have a good rest of your day and get some rest and um thanks so yeah. much for joining us today well thanks for having me and uh i'll be uh see you guys next week all okay right, sounds cool. Take good care. all right so Bye. coming up next we're gonna have dave williams on the line with us so stay tuned Last year at Adobe Max, Adobe launched all that new masking stuff and our minds were blown. It was a real legitimate game changer. How were they gonna follow that up? Ready to get your mind blown part two. Because in this new class, I'm gonna get you up to speed fast on the brand new stuff that Adobe just announced at Adobe Max. All the new incredible masking stuff. They took the masking stuff they did and took it up a whole nother level. It is going to blow your mind when you see it. And I want to show it to you because I want to get you using it. I just want to tell you what the features are. I want to show you how to use them. I got some little tips. I got some tricks. I got lots of good stuff for you. Not just Photoshop, not just classic, not just uh, mobile, but for Photoshop as well. All of that's in this one class. I hope you come and check out my brand new class. Get up to speed fast on the mind-blowing new things in Photoshop and Lightroom 2023 version. What if you could hire an extra set of hands just to deal with editing your photos? And what if this assistant was thinking and editing exactly like you? With Imagine, this is not a distant dream. Introducing your new personalized AI Lightroom Classic Editing Assistant. It analyzes your unique editing style down to the very last detail and applies that style instantly and uniquely to every new photo from your Adobe Lightroom catalogs. Whether it's color correction, cropping, or straightening, Imagine's AI Assistant knows what needs to be done based on your previous edits. The AI constantly learns your unique point of view and improves. With just a few clicks, Imagine edits your photos in your personal style faster than ever. It takes less than half a second per photo at all volumes. Now you can finally have the time to scale up your business and win back free time. In addition to creating your own personal AI profile, you can also use one of our pre-built talent AI profiles. If you are uncertain about your unique style or just want to explore the signatory styles of leading photographers, your new AI assistant is here to deliver achieve amazing results right from the first frame and maintain the highest level of precision in each and every photo. Starting at only a few cents per photo, you get fantastic value for your money and save hours of work. So say goodbye to hours of tedious manual editing and to presets that distort your photos and under deliver and say hello to the future.
future. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. And we're back. And yeah. we're talking today about how to get your images published. And on the line, we have Dave Williams. Hello, Dave. Hello. How hey, are hi. you? Hello, Christina. Limworth. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. We're good. So nice to see you, buddy. Good. Thank you. You too. I've had a terrible 24 hours. Did you see what happened? No, I did not. Tell me. Oh, no. <laughs> so, you know, my really big, expensive all-terrain tires. Yeah. One of them popped. I hit a rock. The rock was hiding in the grass. And so I've just been, I had to deal with it in the rain. It started to snow as well. And the dark last night rolling around on the floor under the van. And I've just, 24 hours on, been able to get a new one fitted from a mechanic, which is really lucky because I'm in the middle of nowhere. Um, I'm in the top of Scotland, northwest of Scotland at the moment. And so I couldn't really be in a worse place, but I've succeeded in fixing everything. So I'm back on track. Oh, well, that's okay, exciting. Well, that's, I can't believe that that happened to you. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> it could only happen to me. So then if you didn't have your vehicle to drive, then did you just call places and try and fit it that way? Or did you have to get yeah, towed? I would, I, I, I would have come up with something. But where I was, I didn't have any phone signal either. So my spare wheel, I didn't know how to get it out. It's underneath. But you have to go in through the top and unscrew some stuff to get the spare one off. And I didn't know how because I couldn't Google it. I didn't hadn't done it before on this vehicle. It's just a, a whole oh, nightmare. Oh, my goodness. It was a disaster. Well, now you, you've got just one more thing that you've learned that you know yeah. what to do next time. Now you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I know. Well, well I'm really glad I'm that you got it fixed. Testing before the Arctic. Right, right. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm sorry that happened to you. Thanks for still uh, agreeing to come on the show after just, all that. Just in time. I literally just left the mechanic. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, um, I did want to invite you on the show because, you know, I know that you have had some success in getting your work published too in a different kind of way than we've talked about so mm -hmm. far. Um, and so I thought it'd be interesting to hear your take on the steps that you've taken in order to get published. Sure. So word of the day, and you must remember this, write this down. This is really important. Hustle. Every photographer, whether you're looking to get published or not, you need to hustle, 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 hustle. Hustle hard. And the hustle reason hard. is exactly hustle real hard. And the reason is it's not just about taking photos. Um, we see loads of stuff about, you know, like pie charts that say I spend 5% of my time taking photos, 20% on finances, 30% on marketing and all that stuff. That's absolutely true, but it's, it's necessary. And although having said that AI technology is helping us out to spend more time on photography by doing boring mundane things for us, true. we still need to spend a lot of time hustling, reaching out to people, pushing marketing, pushing our social media channel mm -hmm. channels, our website, writing a blog, building a portfolio, yeah. all of this stuff. And that's what it is that makes you stand out from the crowd. You can take the best photo in the world. I think I heard you say this not very long ago. Yeah. You can take the best photo in the world and someone who's not as good as you is the one that gets published. They're the one that's hustling. Yep. They're the one that's pushing real hard to get yeah. themselves out there. If you take the so, best photo, you keep it on your hard drive and nobody sees it, then you won't exactly. get published. <laughs> it stays on your exactly. hard drive. Yeah. Exactly. So what, what would you so tell someone of, to get started? Or go ahead with your thought. Uh, I was going to say, one of the questions that popped up that I noticed in the chat was, I think it was from a guy called Bill. I just dropped my phone, so I can't double check. Yes. Asking about um, where to, which sites to, to use to get noticed. The biggest one is Instagram, obviously. But you're fighting amongst a huge crowd there. So there are other places where people look, like advertisers, marketers, graphic designers, publishers do actively look on photographic social media channels mm. to find things that are interesting, things that stand out and mm. things that they want to invest in. Mm. Flickr is a big one because um, Getty Images scours Flickr. Um, and so you might get approached by Getty to buy an image as a stock image. Mm -hmm. um, 500px is a place where people go for real good artwork. Yes. So good photography really stands out there. And there are people from agencies and various other places, advertisers, like I said, 
that are looking actively at 500 px mm -hmm. for photographers yeah so again if it's on your hard drive no one's going to see it great quote then with mm -hmm. but these are the kind of channels and uh, people keep talking about vero have you noticed peter mckinnon's talking about vero's crushing instagram and all this stuff yeah yeah we i'm not sure kind of talk about that. i'm not convinced so vero might be a better social media channel for users but in terms of having your um, photos noticed the audience isn't there the audience is on instagram so the crowd is bigger you're fighting amongst a load of other people over mm -hmm. on instagram mm -hmm. but that's where the crowd is and that's where you need to be vero's not there yet yeah. so then is there a certain formula formula that you follow in terms of making sure that you're posting and um stuff like that yeah so um use everything that's there and on social media use the new features when a new feature is rolled out, the, uh, the the platform is going to promote it and push it so people can see it and use it themselves. So if you notice a new feature, a new stamp, a new way of posting, if you use it, you're likely to be seen. But looking specifically at things like stories, don't go overboard, don't flood it, but, but do it because mm -hmm. people love to see what you're actually up to and get to know you as yes. a photographer. Mm -hmm. Right. So when... So, Lenworth, you posted a, a picture behind the scenes, a video showing the set that you were shooting in. Yes. Perfect. People love seeing behind the scenes. People yes. love to get a glimpse into other people's yeah, lives. They want to see what's going on. Up to. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. They, and they, they'll look at things like, oh, the lights there, you know, the models there, all these kind of things. Yeah. Or if you're using a product, if, here's a platypod. If I'm using a platypod, I'm going to take it, I'm going to put it where it is, I'm going to take the photo, but then I'm going to get my phone out and take a photo of the setup so that people can see this is how I did it, this is what I use. Yes. And that is a great thing to do with any product you use as yeah. a photographer because mm -hmm. these companies, their marketing is, um, their marketing goal is obviously to get people to buy the product by and, showing and they, how it's They used. look for that stuff as well. Exactly, they actively look for it. So if you, if you use your Platypod, tag Platypod in Facebook and Instagram so that they can see mm -hmm. because people get to see that. Um, behind the scenes inside look at you the photographer but it also exposes you to the marketing budgets of these companies that's really smart yeah. so like get the pullback shot right yeah. Yeah, exactly it. that's great advice well and then you've also done a great job with uh stock photography too and so has some of that stuff also got you published as well by posting um, there or no so the way I, there are people that are really, really, really good at stock photography and they do it full time, but there's not many of them because you have to have thousands and thousands of images in these stock libraries like Adobe stock or Getty images or Shutterstock, for example, to be able to make a living off it. The way I look at it is I take my camera and I take all these photos and there are so many more photos on the memory card than I actually put on my blog or on my social media or on my portfolio. There are all these things just sitting there. And if I upload them to stock sites, someone might buy them. And I have a certain set of images that are bought every single month, like without fail, every single month, the same image will sell to certain news sites, which is a rocket launch, funny enough. And that wouldn't, uh, that wouldn't happen if that was still on my hard drive. It's only because it's on there. It's like a surplus image. I've done what I need to do with it with my website with Instagram or whatever else mm -hmm. it's it's an extra thing so you know like when you go um when you go on vacation you take a photo of the mountain you take a photo of the dinner table and you take a I don't know a photo in the city these photos that are uh, particularly the ones with negative space or copy space so that if a magazine buys them they can put some words down the side in the empty bit yeah these are going to sell easily on uh, stock sites. And you might not make loads of money on it, but it's more than if you hadn't done it. Yeah, it's, right. it's, it's, it's better than just having them sit on your hard drive. You know, a little exactly. chain comes in every now and again, you know, and that's, yeah. that's okay. It's not the big exactly. millions, but it's, it's okay to get a little change. But then, yeah, you can get a surprise exactly. check. Right? Yeah. It's like a passive income yeah. Yeah. kind of yeah. deal. Exactly. And it all comes down from hustling. Yeah hustle put put yourself out there do the do the extra little bits reach out to people reach out to the companies take the extra photos all this hustle is what it is going to make you stand out 
Yeah, John Dukes is saying in the chat, Dave Williams is 100% correct. Some of the best photographers do not market much at all. Just simply putting a website <laughs> up and hoping that someone finds it does not work very well. Absolutely. No, you have to be you have to be proactive in it. You have to go. So like N Photo Magazine um, is the unofficial Nikon magazine. I've been uh, in it a couple of times this year. The next issue, December, comes out November 24th. I've got the lead article for that. The reason I've got the lead article for that is because I went out of my way to figure out exactly who the editor is, write to him personally with his name so that he knew I knew who he was, etc. It started off on a good foot and be proactive and saying, hey, this is what I can do. This is what I've got. This is where you can find me. These are some examples of what I've done before. All this hustle made that happen. Yes. So what would be, what would you tell people, like if they were shy and didn't know where to start, what would you tell them to do? Uh, push social media it is the bane of our lives, but it is incredibly powerful. People will notice you there. Start reaching out to the companies that of the, you know, the things that you use and say, Hey, I took this photo using your product. Just so you know, just so you know, just literally so just that, know. just take that step. And then eventually build it and build it and build it until you've got all these things being sent to you or, you know, checks being sent, whatever it is. Oh, and that's another thing. Have I got time for another thing? Yeah, you can do another thing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exposure. There's this whole thing about exposure and exposure doesn't pay the bills. Correct. It doesn't. But it takes you to the places that do pay the bills. And so it's fine to do something for free if it is going to work for you, if it's going to promote you or push your photography, your skills, yeah. <clears throat> or to help with your networking. And networking is huge. Um, so, yeah, exposure doesn't pay the bills. And so you, I, I get that. But you can't just immediately go, oh, don't work for exposure and push it away. You need to think hard about everything and whether it's going to benefit you. Because I can tell you, Without a doubt, Lemworth, you do things for free sometimes, right? Yes, yes. And that leads you to other things, right? Yes, and that leads to other things. And the other things make you money that cover that free thing. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Yes. Scott does it. Yeah. Um, Joe McNally does it. Everyone does it. Yes. It's it, Exposure doesn't pay the bills. Fine. But it helps your networking and it helps you to do that hustle that will pay your bills. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Dave. We do have to take a break, Welcome. but I do appreciate you coming on and giving everybody such great advice. I do think that I've been hearing a theme of there's like this moment where you're like hustling and kind of like, like you said, putting yourself out there for free or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then at some point it flips. it flips and that moment it flips yeah. is when people start to seek you and yes. contact you. And so, but in exactly. order to get there, you really have to just put yourself out there and you gotta, keep you working gotta hard. It. You it's gotta do easy, it. You gotta hustle hard. It seems like at some point it'll just, the, the switch. The switch will flip. Happens. Yeah. 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 And then you keep, and then you keep hustling. And keep hustling. Never and stop. Keep hustling. Don't get comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Dave. I Ooh. hope your day gets better. You get yeah. lots of rest tonight. And um, thank you. And we'll see you soon. It was okay? nice to speak to you both. All right. Cool. Take thank care. You. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right, coming up next, we'll be wrapping up the show, giving away prizes, and um, giving you a couple more tips on how to get your work published.
Hey guys, I'm Tubby and I'm going to show you two really cool products that we at B Flat World sell. So the first one is our duo boards, which are double sided hyper realistic backdrops for food and product photographers. They come in two sizes. This is the larger side. We have all different types of textures and designs. These are some of the new ones that came out recently and they also there's a bag option available for them. And our other product, which is what we actually started the company with, it's called a V-flat. It's a foldable V-flat and it's used for portrait and studio photographers to control light on their subjects to either add light with the white side or use the black side to uh, subtract light or, or even block like an unwanted uh, window light coming in. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. And we're back. And I think that the last segment kind of was a good segue into what we're going to be talking about here. And that's just the idea of like getting callbacks. Yes. Um, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Okay. Tell us the story. So I've done uh, stuff published in magazine all for free mm -hmm. and time has passed. And a couple years later, I get a call. Somebody saw an image I did, and they wanted to work with me. F fast forward, I made some money from that shoot that covered what shoot I did for free. So I made enough to cover that plus more. So you can't be scared, you know, to do stuff for free. As Dave said, you just got to do it. It's the exposure doesn't pay the bill. But guess what? It's leading you to that direction to get the bill paid. Right. Well, that is a good yeah. segue into this question that Teresa had asked. She said, it seems like you're putting out a lot of money up front for like the clothes, the hair, the makeup. Do you trade photos for services with the hair and makeup people? How do you uh, make it affordable if you need to work for free in the beginning? Well, in the beginning, you trade. When you get to a certain level, then you have a budget. Like if you're doing it for the magazine, they send a budget and that's how you're doing it. Like the way if you go to my screen, Jason, you'll see like this, um, this shoot I did, this model flew in from LA. She got the clothes as a loner. So all she had to do was come to Houston, we shot, we tagged the company that loaned the clothes so they get free press for that as well. Mm -hmm. So she did her own makeup. So it worked out and these images are published. Well, and I think that leads to a good point, which what Dave was talking about too, yeah. about just making sure that you have a presence online and that you're posting on social yeah. so you can grow a following. So yeah. then that way, when you want to borrow something, then people see you have an audience. They see you have because the, the, the company she borrowed from, they went to my social and look and they sent me a message saying, if I asked if I knew her, I was like, yeah, I knew her. Yeah. And they're like, okay. And they're like, we're sending stuff, just tag us. And they send me all their information. So we did that. Awesome. And we even got the images published. Nice. Yeah, great. That's like a triple win. Yeah, so <laughs> you know, you get you get free clothing, you know, they get exposure and you make some money off it. Right. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yes. Nice. What else do you have to show us? So here are a few more images that I have published. And this one is published, but it's not out as yet, so we're still waiting for the magazine to come in. So as you can see, you have to have variations. And when it goes to the magazine, they're changing the format. So, you know, they're, you have to follow their specification however they want it, because they're putting content on there. Mm -hmm. So- Like those, they know what layout they're trying yes. to 
do the spread yes. with and and yes. so they have specific dimensions specific dimensions that you have to follow and they can't repeat that enough you got to follow those specifications because sometimes as photographers we tend to want to do our own stuff like oh, no, i like that i want to do my own uh, mm -hmm. no you can't you just got to follow the specifications and so um we were going to also just mention that website that that uh lenworth uses one more time yeah as well. so that's caviar.com and also photoshop user magazine yes with kelby one is a great way to get your images in there also you know and as dave mentioned social media linkedin instagram twitter you know all those sites will allow you to get your images out so folks can see it and i promise you you will get a call one day that is awesome. And I think, you know, with the Photoshop user magazine, um, we definitely have all these contests all the yeah, time. So yeah. if you haven't noticed or didn't know, um, you know, make sure you follow Kelby One and then you'll see our posts when we are doing these member contests. And I think sometimes those might even get selected yes. into the magazine. I've been published in there, so. <laughs> what else? Anything else? Just keep hustling and keep hustling hustling hard yes and so we do have some prizes to give away i don't want to forget um and so we'll be giving those away let me just make sure that there's no more questions it seems like we've got mostly everybody saying and i see a bunch of people saying that they that this episode has been informative and thank you um i'm glad we were really hoping that yeah. you guys would benefit from all of this um and so yeah, thank you for that feedback. All right, so the prizes are up there. Lenworth, do you want to give them away? Uh, sure. Uh, Potty Pod elbow support arm goes to Dale Bales. Mm -hmm. All right, Dale, there you go. Congratulations, Dale. Travel photography book goes to Craig Byers, Bears. And how do I do that in Lightroom, Ed Weiner? Uh, on one effects 2023 right 2023 okay uh, maxine davis robertson congrats well uh, v flat one v flat uh, that's lawrence lane did i say that correctly? i think so lane <laughs> and one do you board excel mike grimes yep so if we called your name please make sure you email gridprize at kelby1.com Give us your name, your shipping address, and then we'll be sure to send you your prize out as soon as we can. So, um, yeah, I hope that you guys really enjoyed the show, that you are inspired now to just get started and try to get out there. Um, I feel like I learned a lot, and there was many different ways to try and get your work yes. published, whether yep. it's... Um, Seeking out magazines yourself. Magazines, art directors, you right? know, social media. Just keep doing it. Just go out there. Don't keep the stuff on your hard drive because nobody will see it. You know, just publish it. Just right. get it out. I know sometimes we tend to be scared. You know, you don't want people to see your stuff, you know, but if you want to make money, you got to get your stuff out. And then you'll learn as you go too. Yeah, and I it's, think it's that, experience will come. Yep, and differentiating differentiating your photos. Yes. Because um, I didn't know everything when I started. I, I I learn as I go along, and I make adjustments as I go along. Well, thank you for being here today, thank Lenworth, you for and for having me. hanging out with us this week. Absolutely great. Yep, it's the I best team ever. <laughs> great. And thank you all for joining today. Thank you to Jason in the control room, Eric behind the camera, Juan in the chats, and Ron for the stream. Um, we appreciate you. And and go follow me at Lenwert John, Lenwert Johnson on Instagram. Follow me. I need to get them subscribers up. Lenworth Johnson <laughs> on Instagram. Yeah, go follow. Like, subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell your friends' friends. Tell everybody. <laughs> follow. <laughs> and we'll see you guys next week. Thank you for joining.